so we fired this kiln with these little stainless steel hearts filled with frit. And we used a variety of different sizes of frit to see the effect of those sizes on the outcome. So let's open the kiln and see what we have. All right, come on closer. We've got five hearts. Now what you're seeing here, uh, this is a um, ceramic kiln shelf. It's been primed after the primer goes through the kiln to a full fire, a full fuse, it turns white. It was pink earlier. Notice how the pieces have shrunk. That's because we used frit, which is kind of a small mass material. And also notice this is the thin fire material that kind of disintegrates when it's fired. And it gives us a really pretty edge, but it kind of folds in a little bit onto those pieces. I also want you to notice how they look now in the kiln where everything is kind of dark. And it's like, oh gosh, what colors do we use? And where's the, where's the depth in these pieces? So let's pull them out and uh, see what we have. I'm pretty excited. So when I pull these out, the thin fire is very dusty, so I don't really like to have it on my hands. I don't really like to, um, to breathe it in, so I'm going to put this mask on for a minute. Let's see if I can get it on without whipping myself. Maybe I can't put it on. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're getting it. We're getting it. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to take this out. Hope you can still hear me. And I'm going to bring this over here to where I've got my big old vacuum cleaner. And come a little closer if you can. All right, and look, when we pull this off, look how easily that comes right off of there. Look at that, and look at that beautiful edge quality. All right, so we had one, two, three, oh, look at that, four. Oh, that one needs a little incentive, there we go. Oh, that one has a cute little end. And there we go. Now, remember, we lined the stainless steel cookie cutter with eighth inch thick material and then thin fire. Now look, if you just tap that, tin, that thin fire, it kind of comes right out. And we can re, if we're careful, we can reuse this eighth inch material. So what I'm gonna do now is take the vacuum. You can do this one of two ways. As long as they're absolutely 100% cool, you could put, dip them in a bucket of water to remove the material, or you could use your vacuum. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum on for a minute. That's pretty cool using the vacuum to get that thin fire out of there, isn't there? Isn't that? So, see if we're careful with this, we don't touch it, we can use it again. And putting that material in there is time consuming and it's, you know, using more material. So, if we can reuse that, that's terrific. Great benefit. And I believe we could probably, get, I've gotten maybe two, three uses out of this if you're real careful. So, look at, at our awesome little hearts. I'm going to go over here and grab, oh my god, that's the adventure in blue. Um, I'm going to grab it right here in my little rolling cart. This is called a sickle stone. It actually comes in a 12 inch piece like this. Um, I think, I don't know what it's made out of. It's almost like a um, cement or something. But when you drop it on the floor, well, then you have one to share with a friend So because because it breaks. So these are ones I've gotten at different times at different places. But when your artwork comes out of the kiln like this, sometimes it has these, i hold this up for you, so you can see these little sharp edges. Those will cut you, so we want to avoid grinding them because that'll put an abrased edge on our, the edge of our glass. And look at this beautiful edge quality we have here, this nice rounded shoulder. That's consistent with using the thin fire fiber paper. So now I'm going to take this sickle stone and I'm going to go at like a 45 degree angle and just wipe along that glass. It takes the sharpness out, it removes those little bumps, and it doesn't leave an abrased edge. Works great. 
Now I'm using this at an angle like this. You don't want to do this because that'll scratch your glass and you don't want to do this. That will scratch your glass. So I'm just kind of going this angle just to take that edge off and nothing else. And there we go. Now it's safe and it looks nice. Now check each of these. Now this one doesn't really have any of those. Oh my God, isn't that one beautiful? Okay, notice how I'm doing that nice strict angle. And I'm getting taking that rough edge off, no longer sharp, giving it a nice clean edge. And then we don't have to worry about that grinder abrasion on there. I think that looks pretty good. Look how pretty that is. All right, so we've got these five hearts with the different materials. This one was made with powder material. And I want you to know that I'm gonna take my little wet sponge over here and wash this off. I want you to notice about this one is how milky it is. How the light doesn't come through, it's very solid almost like um, a stone instead of glass. It doesn't really have a lot of transparency. And also look how thick it is. It, um, it condensed a lot more than some of the other materials because the frit is so much smaller, you know, because this is a powder form. So you see the different individual colors, that's great. You can't see through it at all. I mean, look, you can't see, you know, anything behind it. So keep in mind, if you're gonna use powder material, you're going for color and for kind of solid look, not really the transparency. Now this one, we used fine. Let's clean that off a little bit. And remember these were filled pretty much to the top of these molds. And look at the difference in height in these two and the material. Now this is also a bigger mold, but look how much larger it is. Now that's almost jewelry size. This is probably not, this is probably too big for jewelry. But this one, we layered it with um, a dark green a fine aventurine blue, and then a pale blue. And then we see the green here, you get that green color, but look how dense that is. And then here's the blue, and then the aventurine, this is a, um, let's see, this is a turquoise blue opal, and then the aventurine blue on top. And this is the one that I kind of screwed up when I was building, and the pieces all shifted. So uh, keep that in mind. You may want to redo something that you screw up. So, if you're looking for transparency in your piece, the, these colors are not gonna give it to you. They're gonna give you this kind of striped look and maybe a striped look this way. We've got this pretty pattern on this one, but not on this one because uh, the assembly didn't go as planned. But it does have a nice, even, consistent color. We've got that shimmer from the aventurine blue and the aventurine green. Actually, there's a slight line here. This is the aventurine green, this is the aventurine blue. We get that nice shimmer there that's really pretty and consistent with that material. But as far as getting any sort of depth, nope, doesn't really have it. All right, so let's move over to this one. This is the medium material. And the key difference here is this is an opal color. This is a transparent color. Look at the amount of depth we have here. And when you look at it from the side, the light goes through it and it just has a very jewel tone to it. Oh, here at the back, you see the opal material. So what happens is you can actually, if you look very closely, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can actually see the identifying grain sizes that we used here, even in the opal material. So what happens when you use the medium is you get good color concentration. If you use an opal, you get a very solid kind of look. If you use a transparent, you get a lot of you know, visual transparency through it, but this also has to be a light color. But what I also want you to pay attention to is look at the number of bubbles here. The bubbles are consistent with the size frit you use. These are like little soda bubbles or champagne bubbles. If you use a larger frit, you have fewer bubbles, but larger bubbles. If you use a smaller frit, like over here, you have fewer bubbles, but you also, it, it can become so dense that you can't see through it. So it depends on what your end goal is as to how you want to use these pieces. Now this one is made with coarse frit. We used an opal and then two different transparent colors. So this is an orange transparent here on the edge. It looks very red. And this is a red transparent in the middle, but look how dense that is. And then we used an opaque uh, marigold here. Let's see what this is. Yeah, marigold. And look how you can see the different grain quality of the sizes. So you don't lose the look of the grain quality. It doesn't have any transparency because it's an opal. 
This does have transparency because it's a transparent color. The red is a transparent, but it's such a deep color that you don't really see through it. So we are getting a lot of information from these, even though they're not exactly what I had anticipated making or planned, which is really kind of fabulous because I love learning new things. So when you're doing uh, something like this, best to use a lighter version of the color that you want if you want to keep, retain that transparency. And again, it's, you know, what's your end goal here? What do you want to use these for? Now this was made with mosaic material and this one is very dark and very dense. It's also thicker than all the others. Look at these, they're all slightly, these are similar in height. This one's lower, but look, this one's higher. These all have a slightly different um, thickness to them. That's also interesting. And they were filled about the same amount. Now this one is made with uh, light purple and a gray. I'll pour some of these out for you and see what the color looks like. Look, that's a pretty pale color. And that's not all that dark either. But look on this piece how deep this is. It looks black. And so there's no transparency there. There's really nothing of interest in here other than it's a cool heart that we made with a cookie cutter. So we learned a lot here too. On the back side, if I wipe it clean and then dry it, you can get a little bit of a sense of the different mosaic shapes or uh, coarse shapes that were used here. Actually, this is mosaic. And you can actually see a little almost scarring of how the shapes were laid out on the kiln shelf. So it does identify the, you know, the pattern there. Uh, we hold it up to the light and nothing. Nothing can't see through it. It's just a very nice dark heart. But uh, we do have terrific edge quality. Uh, nice contact with the kiln shelf because we don't have any sharp edges on this one. So that was all good. But also with the mosaic material, you're gonna have less um, roughage around the edge because the pieces are bigger. The smaller material, of course, it seeps underneath that fiber paper. So these are all the different little tiny idiosyncrasies about the different materials you can use to do casting. So if you intend to you know, include casting in some of your artwork, I'd suggest you get some of these hearts and you do small little test pieces with these different materials to see what effect you want and what works best for you and your particular project. So with that first experiment, I'm really pleased with the results we have and I'm really pleased with the, what we learned, but I think we could take this exercise a little further. So I'm going to make four more hearts and this time I'm going to fill them the way I would fill, not just the way that we did the other day to, to use material and give you a sense of depth and a sense of how dense this material could be. So I'm going to take this first little heart, I'm going to take water clear medium and I'm going to put a bunch of that on the bottom. What this is going to do is increase the clarity and the depth in the art. Now I'm going to take transparent blue in a powder form, which we know is kind of milky. I'm putting that off to one side. Now I'm going to add more clear on top, which will be like a, um, you know, think of like a cake with layers. Now I'm going to take some powder green and put that on the other side. And we're going to put more clear on top of that. Let's fill this little baby up. So you can get a sense of those materials. So the clear will distribute the color so that the powder is not so solid and dense, so it won't be so milky. So we'll get some transparency through that piece of art. Now this next one, I'm going to, so that was powder form. This next one's going to be fine. We have a transparent yellow. Now we're going to do something similar. I'm going to take some of the clear, water clear medium, put that in there. Now we'll do a layer of yellow fine, transparent, more water clear, some orange transparent in the fine size. So I'm using probably 75% clear to 25% color. And what this should do is give us some real nice um, saturation, transparency. I'm also using, for the most part, transparent colors. So this orange and yellow are transparent. And I'm not using a lot of color, I'm using more clear. 
And while you're using the clear, it'll accentuate the layering that's going on. The layering accentuates the sense that we have depth in these pieces of glass, in these pieces of art. All right, so that's medium. Oh, okay, this is medium. Okay, now we're moving over this. All right, so powder, fine. These are medium, but I'm using the medium water clear in between, excuse me, in between those colors. <clears throat> Now, Nikki really liked this citron green, so we're going to use it again in this next one. And maybe we'll use this instead of clear. Pour that in, and then we have a pretty aqua, you know, like a sky blue. Pour that in. And we are going to use some clear because I know it's going to help these colors show better. And now some blue on top of the green. Ooh, whoo, isn't this pretty? Again, we're using very little color, more clear, to accentuate these layers and show off the depth that we have. Now I'm going to add some yellow to this one, just for fun. Woo, got a little crazy there. I think that's all we're going to do. And now a little more of this citron green, because this is so pale that it shows up really nicely, even when the artwork is thick. Put a little green over that yellow. Now I'm filling these up. Ooh, let's put a little bit in that one, too. Ooh, I just messed up by putting mixing my shine sizes. Ooh, so exciting. <sighs> Everything can happen in this studio. You'd have no idea. All right, so we got this one pretty full. This one could, these two could maybe use a little more material. So I'm going to add a little more clear to those. Remember, clear, like in everything, is your filler. It's your extra material. All right, now I'm going to take this last one, and I'm going to fill it with coarse size frit because I really want you to see the different bubble action you get with this larger material. All right, so add the clear, add some blue, whoa, add some clear. Some uh, citron. Ooh, that's really pretty, the way those are reacting together. Because I can see the blue through the citron. That's a very pretty combo. Now more clear. On off to one side. So when I fill a mold, I always have a plan to my method. I don't just dump things in. Like, I'm doing everything here kind of at an angle. So there's a transition of color from one side to the other. I feel like thinking that little things like that through make your artwork a lot prettier. I'm going to put a little bit of this green in there. I'll just pepper a few pieces in and then clear on top because I want you to see how those hover in space when we build that way. And in some instances, having the material float in space, you know, a little bit on the bottom, like the green on the bottom, the middle on the top, that's where I think you really get the sense of depth and the real beauty of this type of construction. I'm satisfied with the fill on these and that they're, you know, almost all the way to the top. There's no material, messy material on the edge. I've got good contact with the shelf. I didn't lift any up today, so that's very good. Uh, I got a couple of blue pieces over here on top of this clear, and I think that's so pretty. I'm going to add a few more of those on top. Because this, this clear is so pretty. So what we're doing differently here today is... With the exception of this um, Amazon green, everything is transparent. Everything is lighter. I'm not. I'm using only light, light blue. I'm only use, I'm using orange instead of red. I'm using a nice big chunky yellow, pale green, pale blue, and clear in between the layers to different to help spread out that color, so we don't end up with four more little hearts looking like this. So I'm going to go ahead and load these in the kiln, fire them overnight, and then I will show you what we have when they're ready to come out. Welcome back to the studio, and we're going to do the completion of our what fruit to choose for casting. So the first time we did five different hearts with um, a variety of different fruit. Second time we did five, four hearts with a variety of fruit, but we included clear. We used clear to create some layers to make sure that the colors showed true and didn't get too dark and muddy and also to get a greater sense of depth with the colors. And I want to show you the effect of the different sizes in the, the hearts to show you the kind of clarity and the kind of bubbles you can expect depending upon the size material that you use. So come on closer. All right, over here we have, these are the four new ones. 
These are the five we did before. And first of all, notice the beautiful rounded edge. That's from using the eighth inch, thi eighth inch thick fiber paper and then lined with the thin fire fiber paper. And then also notice the thickness here. We filled these to the top, but look, this one is considerably thicker because that was larger material. This was the coarse material. Notice that, that powder, fine, medium, and coarse have different thicknesses because this one condensed le less because of the size of the material. I also want you to notice that this one was powder, transparent blue, powder, opal green with water clear. And see that little kind of graining effect that you're getting there. If we turn it over, you can see it a little bit better. Those little kind of grains that you see there, that's the water clear in between the powdered material. Notice the opaque uh, quality of this um, green, how you can't see through it, but you can kind of see through the, the blue area, which is kind of nice. So it's a mixture of the materials that give you that really cool look. Also notice the tiny little bubbles. We've got a lot of bubbles when we use the powdered material, and that's because the material has so, is so dense. Now this one was made with fine, and look, we, this was all transparent material with a lot of clear. Look how cool and pretty that is and bright. We got a lot of little champagne bubbles in this because of the size of the material. So let's turn it over, see if you can get a sense of the sizes we used here. We got the orange kind of lining out here, a little orange here. And notice this one has a lot more clarity. So clarity is consistent with using more clear. So depending upon what you want out of your hearts, we determine what material you'd use and how much of it. This one, look at all the adorable little bubbles in that like a little champagne, and I love the colors. It's a green and a blue. These are all transparent colors with the water clear in between. And look at this, how you get a real sense of the, the layering there because of that clear material. And then even the back is pretty. We've got some nice stuff going on there. Look at the layering there. Isn't that cool? All right, so check out that layering. Isn't that cool? And look how it changes as you go around the heart. Really fun. Now this, you see this little bump here? That's where we didn't have the fiber paper lined up as neatly as we did on these others because we got that little bump there. So that's consistent with not having your fiber paper lined up all the way to the end of the mold. So keep that in mind when you're putting it together. And then this one is made with coarse material. Look, a lot fewer bubbles, but bigger bubbles. And look at the beautiful clarity and depth we have there. This was clear, coarse material, opaque green and transparent blue all in coarse. And look at that beautiful edge quality there and the layering. And on the back, this also had an iridized material. You can see that shimmer right there. And look, you can see the, um, the material used. You can kind of identify what size frit was used by looking at the texture on the back side. So I'm really happy with all of these hearts. I think they're all very successful. And I just want you to see like, you know, the material that you use and the size material you use are directly in relationship to the way the finished project looked. So keep that in mind. And if you are, want to do some casting, I would recommend you start with these small little pieces, the little hearts, and do some test pieces. Not only will you have fun, you're going to learn a bunch of stuff, but you also can, you know, use these as little gifts or paperweights or whatever you want. All right, thanks for joining me. We have an audience here in the studio today helping us from the background. And I just want to thank you for joining me. I hope you found this information informative and helpful. If you did, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. I also have a premium video subscription on my website. Please check that out. Consider subscribing. You get a brand new video every month, if not two. We're, we're shooting for two very shortly. And you also get uh, patterns with it and instructions, firing guides, everything you need. Plus, you get to be part of the, you know, premium video subscription membership group, and we would love to have you join us. So please consider doing that. So thanks again for joining us, and until next time, happy fusing.